Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello and welcome dear viewer to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. We are bringing you another invigorating and exciting episode and I have a very young, less, a very talented entrepreneuress, if you could call it that. Her name is Sidiye Gemwa. We are going to talk about all things manufacturing, specifically the manufacturing of cosmetics and oils. Am I right? Yes, you're okay. right. Would you uh, give uh, the viewers a little bit about your background, who you are, where did you come from and how did you get into manufacturing? All right, so my name is Sidi Mwabe. I am the GM of Chadol Group, um, known as Chadol Fragrances and Cosmetics. We are basically manufacturers of cosmetic products and fragrances, just fine fragrances. Mm -hmm. um, so the company was established in 2015 um, from basically the love of cosmetics. It was a thing of, you know what, the ladies in this house love fragrances. Mm -hmm. What's so difficult about starting one? Mm -hmm. You know, since we're always collecting bottles here and there, let's, let's get this interest of how you can start your own fragrance line. And that's how it basically started where, you know, friends and family would just test and see, okay, um, how does this one smell? How does this concoction smell? And they're like, oh, it's amazing. Mm. And then over time, people are like, why don't you guys monetize this? Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing what you guys are doing. You guys can be given us this for free. So monetize it and give it to the people and see how they like it. So that's basically really how it started, more mm. of an informal to a formal transition mm -hmm. over the years. And um, in 2018, uh, we moved into Game City where we now opened an official store, um, a perfume bar over there where people could now access us in Game City, come and see, test and try. Um, it wasn't online based anymore. Um, and then 2019, that's when we launched our um, body range products, our body range, get up, the normal lotions that we use, the body scrubs and body um, washes. We're, We're going to talk about the yeah. nitty gritties yes. as, the, as the interview progresses. Yes. Tell me a little bit about Shadow. Where does the name come from? What does it mean? Shadol. Shadol is very interesting. These two little boys in the household. One is called Shema mm. and the other one is called Adolf. Mm. And we just cut those names, put them together, made These something very unique. These are your cousins? These are you? my nephews. Oh, your nephews. Yes, these okay. are my nephews. And okay. we cut those names um, by the time they were the only children around. Mm -hmm. And we just made one unique name, Shadol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And let's talk about the learning process. How you went into manufacturing. I know that there's a YouTube element in all of this. Just tell us about the learning process Definitely. and how it went about for you to, to fall in love with manufacturing. You know, um, what I, one thing I like about the people who are in this company, they're always curious to learn more. And the internet is, is an open space where you can learn literally anything. And like we like to call it, um, we like to say the University of YouTube. Mm. That's when we learned, or where we learned um, um, how to manufacture cosmetics. Um, you know, these, this certain type of oil with mm. this certain type of um, butter and this water, and you have to mix it together. And then mm. you learn that, no, okay, so this is how a lotion is made. You have to use another element we call emulsifiers in our company. Emulsifiers. Um, yes, emulsifiers, because water and oil don't mix. Mm. So how these butters are made, you use butter, and lotions and oils and then you mix them with emulsifiers that makes it one lotion mm -hmm. so that's how we learned it's like oh okay so we have to use this and this and then these preservatives anything that has water anything under manufacturing that includes water mm. has to have a preservative mm -hmm. those are the little things that you learn over time mm. and you know what once we learned the basics because there's a lot of formulas once you learn the basics that's when you have to involve a cosmetic chemist to say listen I learned this and this and this please confirm this is it good for the skin is it something that people can apply and we got confirmed mm. so after after learning from ourselves, from the wide internet, mm. um, we now included professionals and even got our own manufacturing certificates um, from there on okay. in terms of learning. How many products in total are we looking at? We are looking currently in the retail stores. We have about three products. Um, this is the butters, 
-hmm. this is the scrubs, mm -hmm. and then this is the body oils. Mm -hmm. So um, all these three products have different ranges. We like using indigenous oils. Indigenous, I mean locally sourced from Botswana. Mm -hmm. In our products, I'm talking about our Mrula, our Baobab, our Kalahari melon, and our Mongongo. These are wild fruits that grow basically around the whole of the whole mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. We bring them and incorporate them in our products. So am I to understand that your products are mostly herbal? In other words, local local uh, trees are being used definitely mm. though that's the competitive edge that we had mm. you know we look we looked in Botswana and we say we have a lot of indigenous seas indigenous oils that have mass research on them but what are we doing with them mm. so that's when we decided you know what we're gonna put a natural element in our products mm. and that's when we decided all these oils we're gonna have different ranges Mm. and incorporate them in our products and they're okay. doing really well because people are really excited to see some of these Murula and Baba finally be incorporated mm. in our cosmetics. Okay, yes. I gave just some of your products to Mama Hobi. Yes. He used as a guinea pig at the house. Yes. She's hooked. So, <laughs> Amazing. Um, you know, we will show the view as time goes on yes. some of those products but the visualizing your brand, talk, uh, tell us about that process, that creative process. How did you visualize how did you visualize it and how did it come about? You know, uh, like I said, when the, when the company started, it was more of an informal type of setting mm. where we just did it just as a hobby, for lack of better words. Mm. And over time, we're like, you know what, if you can monetize this, how far can we go? You know, reach for the stars and beyond. We were looking at other big cosmetic companies, how they started, how um, your Nivea started, your body shops and all of that. They all started as a small entity and eventually grew to where they are today and beyond in future. Mm. So that's the type of vision that we have for the company. Mm. We want every Motswana, one way or another, to have a Shadol product, mm. whether they know it or not you should have one product from Shadol, manufactured by Shadol, in your household. Mm. And we will get there. And that's the vision that we just generally have for the whole company or whatever we do, is that we wanted to reach many people as possible, both countrywide, next we go regional, next we go um, continent-wide. Mm. So that's, that's the, the general vision that we have and we we're definitely planning on achieving that. Okay. Some people have um, wondered about the entry price and I have feared the possibility of being killed by the big cosmetic lines, the Nivea's of this world, you know, everybody knows them, the big ones. Yes. Um, how did you approach the challenges of pricing um, in terms of shaping your positioning in the local market? Let's talk about pricing. I think uh, pricing is one of uh, the, the most complex parts when it comes to SMMEs, especially manufacturers. Mm. Um, because now we're looking at your economies of scale, you know, um, because we're an SMME, we're not mass, we're not in mass production as your original Nivea's and of all, all the sorts. Mm. Um, so y y we tend to have um, more expensive raw materials, mm. which then cripples our end costs of production. You know, initially when we started, our butter was going as high as 80 pula. Mm. And, you know, we'd go and we'd market it, we'd show it to the people and people would be like, oh, it's amazing, it's local, it's natural. But, mm. oof, my purse doesn't allow um, something, mm. um, a butter um, for 80 pula. When I've been using one that's been costing 40 pula and mm. then all of a sudden I changed to 80 pula, it's mm. not going to be enough, mm. unfortunately. So we had to go back to the drawing board, you know. We had to see, okay, what can we do to now accommodate the prices because obviously um, the market price is much much lower um, as much as our product is good we also need to make sure that the client can be able to come back to the store and say I'm getting this again next month I'll come and get it mm -hmm. again so we had to go back to the drawing board that's when you look could at different you just, suppliers. Could you just take your position and say we'll hold on to our position until the market is educated and we'll have a discerning buyer, yes. a discerning buyer who can afford us. Who can afford you us. didn't want to take that stance. I think, I think it, it was definitely a route that we looked into, but looking at the market, it was going to take time. Mm. It was going to take time. I like saying this, that, you know, if most of the market, because you have to study where you are, you know, if the market that we're currently in, mm. our local market, is mostly affording this or is mostly used to that. Mm. Unfortunately, it's very difficult for us to just come and shift the narrative. Mm -hmm. More so that already the big brands are 
the ones that have penetrated that market so much. Mm. So as a startup, when we tried to penetrate that through that route, it was it was a bit difficult. But mm. um, one thing I like about us is that we're very versatile. You can get your product at 23 pula from Shadol, and you mm. can get one at 70 pula from Shadol. Depending Chidol. on quantity? Depending on quantity, depending on the location, depending on the product itself, and the ingredients used in there itself. Mm. So all of those things really matter. That's why I said we had to go back to the drawing board to see, okay, what is this market saying? Mm. Um, I think that's why you tend to see um, organic products um, are more expensive in the retail stores more than your synthetic products. Mm -hmm. All those nitty gritties are very essential to, to the end price. Mm. Yes. Um, how do you then maintain a competitive edge if you at the same time have to compete with the big giants? I think one thing that we really, really loved or that people love, this is more of the people now and how mm. they're responding, is that they like that natural element. Mm. Um, the whole world is now changing um, or shifting into natural, organic, and this and that. Away from synthetic. Away from synthetic products. Mm. And that's one thing that we really pride ourselves in. That's mm. one thing that actually even started the company because mm. we are looking at that ourselves. Mm. You know, because you tend to see people research saying, oh, synthetic products years down the line can affect people in different ways. Mm. So with a more natural element, people are more responsive to that because they're like, oh, great, I've actually been looking for a button. Um, that that is natural or that is organic um, that I can use on my skin that I can use on my kids something that I can use and my baby can use mm -hmm. and that's that's the nice part about it people really really like um, that whole idea of you know staying um, moving with the times in terms mm -hmm. of the more natural element. Mm -hmm. Also, the fact that we are a local brand that's manufacturing um, 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 cosmetics, that's something that is new, that's something that has um, that, that is new that Botswana are seeing, that Botswana are loving, and we, we love that um, people are responding well to that. You know, mm. people are really excited about local manufacturers increasing in our in general environment, business environment, and mm. Definitely, it's, it's something that will push us forward, mm. yes. How, 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 of, of all the products, which one do you say is flying off the shelf? Flying. Which one are Botswana really falling in love with? The butters. It definitely has to be the butters. Mm -hmm. um, we actually, on our Instagram pages, if we are an active follower on our Instagram and our social medias, mm. um, we get um, people Can I just stop you there for right. a second? All right. I stumped you a little bit because I wanted to really understand this butter. Which one is it among these products? The butter is... And, and tell me why, why what, what, is, what about it that Botswana love? Oh, there's, there's a lot of things that Botswana love that we love as well. Mm. Number one, let's just look at the branding. Mm -hmm. The branding, like I said, we pride ourselves in the indigenous element, in the natural element of the product. Mm -hmm. If you can see the design of our product, we have a Letesi. Um, design. Mm -hmm. All our products have a Letesi element into it, which differentiates the ranges that we have. Mm -hmm. um, what do you mean a Letesi element? Le, le, it's a German print, the mm -hmm. traditional German print that we have in Botswana, you know, for the weddings, for the, the ones that our mothers mm -hmm. wear during the weddings. That's the branding, the different branding that we wanted to bring it in, in, into um, um, our products. Mm -hmm. And then apart from that, like I said, natural. Um, if you see the big murula over there that's being shown, that the big babab that's being shown among the products, that's mm. one thing that really sells. Because, you know, our, our, our forefathers have been using these oils for a very long time. Mm. You know, your, your Lutoku, mm. um, your Kalahari Melon, these mm. are products that have been used by our forefathers for a very long time. Mm. And that's where the research was derived from, that mm. why have they been using it for all these years? Mm. Now we can turn that traditional mode into a more modernized one, mm. we can now put it into the products that we use every single day. Mm -hmm. So that's how we, um, the, 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 the vision that we had or the competitive edge that we have for the products okay. and with the butters people absolutely love them like I said if you have an active follow on our Instagram and our social media pages you'll be able to see that people love the butters mm. so mm. much now in terms of uh, me who's not so discerning and men in general who may not be so aware which one which of these products is is ideal for a man's skin the men's Skin. Mm. Definitely our butters, and we like putting in our beard oil for our. It's called our, a beard oil. Yes, it's okay. called a beard oil for the for the gentlemen with uh -huh. um, who the love the, oils. With, with the mongongo oils, oh. with the baobab and the marula oils, uh -huh. and our traditional vitamin E and almond oils in there. Okay. Yes, so these are the products that we just definitely. So this one is good for men. men. For the men. 
Yeah, the men it, does it grow my men hair? Men. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it would have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just joking. The, but what beard. is it ideal for? Um, the beard oil is good for, let me say, a healthy environment for beard growth. Mm -hmm. I think the natural element, when people say beard oil, they think that, you know what, if I apply beard oil today, tomorrow, all of a sudden I have a big beard over there. No, yeah, it doesn't yeah. work like that. Yeah. Um, it, it, it creates a healthy environment yeah. for beard growth, especially for men who have the genes to grow those beards. Because mm. my father, for example, he just doesn't grow facial hair. Mm. That's just how he is. So mm. it will not work Same for him. Mm. Yes. Mm. So okay. that's, that's just how it works. Yes. All right. So, I, so again, you, 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 I want you to talk a little bit about the competitive edge or the advantage uh, for, for this product. Mm -hmm. I'm asking this in the context of the Africa Free Trade Agreement in terms of which hopefully the tariffs will be falling off and people will be getting visas and be able to travel as far as Lagos, Abuja, wherever you, you want to go in Africa, you know, as far as Cairo. Hopefully that's where we are heading. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I want you to, to talk a little bit about that in terms of uh, the possibilities for Africa and which product you think would be good for the entire continent. Definitely. Mm. Um, with our oils, we get our oils in Botswana. Mm. Some of them in Botswana, our indigenous oils, some of them in South Africa, mm. some as far as Ghana. Mm -hmm. So I think with the whole trade agreement, it's, it's definitely going to be an advantage for us and um, other manufacturers who are using these um, or indigenous products and oils in the formulations because you know sometimes we, we look at our local ma manufacturers or extractors of the oils as for a supplier or for, for a manufacturer it may be um, a bit expensive to get them locally because they're still doing it at a very small scale mm -hmm. but we, we get um, supplies for as far as Ghana like I said um, South Africa. Why do you have to go that far? As far as Ghana because um, fortunately or unfortunately <sighs> those are the large scale suppliers that we use or that we need mm. right now mm. because they support the quantities that we're also manufacturing. It's not available locally. It's, it's, it's available locally but not at the, at the, not at the level that we want. Mm -hmm. And I think um, because it, it's a fairly, you know, Botswana is, is now shifting into that whole natural narrative, like I said, mm. and that's when people are more interested in building that value chain mm. of um, the indigenous oil. So our extractors are still um, growing in that level. The whole sector is, is growing generally mm. so I think in a couple of two to three years maybe we can be able to now shift back fully mm. um, locally but for now it's, it's, it's a shared it's a shared supply mm. where some of them we, we can get them unavailably locally and some of them internationally mm. and mm. I think when it comes to the finished product as well I mean we're looking at exporting now it's going to be a, a very um, advantages um, 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 deal for us because now we're able to export we we have people from as far as Nigeria some even Egypt where they wanted to, to get the products and you know um, it's been a bit of a bit difficult with the nitty-gritties we have to get our certifications correct and everything and then that's when we're able to freely export mm -hmm. that side and I think with, with what the is so complex about getting certification what is involved in that certification um, okay so we have our local bobs um, Bob's, we took the products to Bob's and they, they, unfortunately, some of the scopes are not available for the cosmetic products that we have. And then they're they limited. gave us, yes, they're, limit, they're very limited. Mm. And then they took us out, you know what, we have um, a partner in India, a partner in Kenya, who will be able to test your products and that we did exactly that. Mm. It's a bit more pricey, but we did exactly that because we're looking at the bigger picture of exporting. You're and looking long yes, term as well. Yes, we're looking long term as well. Mm. So we had to get those certifications right where they check each and every ingredient in there, where mm. they tie and test it under any condition, hot, cold, this and that, mm. to be able to see if the shelf life is indeed what we're saying it to be. And then apart from that, we have more international standards, which are even more difficult. Your FDA, um, your, your, your European standards, where they even look at your production process, where you produce, how you produce, um, are these conditions safe? Is what you're doing actually what is written on the bottle? And all those things. So um, as much as it's difficult, it's also very advantageous because you know we, we're looking into the bigger global market and we have to get those papers right you know for that global market anytime the fda we are in the process of getting fda approved and food and drug administration and drug, yes, in, in the u.s in the u.s mm. and you know one thing about the fda they're very strict about the products that go into the u.s mm -hmm. and they can come anytime unannounced to our factory and say we are here, FDA, mm. let's see if what you're saying is actually what you've submitted. Mm. And we have to be ready for that whenever, however, mm. at any given moment. 
does that require you to hire scientists and and specialists and nutritionists how does it work definitely we have our cosmetic chemists mm. um, one is based here one is based in Cape Town whereby we give these for every time we have a new formulation we make the formulation give all the specs in Britain in detail how it's produced mm. to our cosmetic chemist our cosmetic chemist is by the way um, EU certified mm. who will be able to say okay Yes, this is the formulation that you can go with. Sometimes they say, no, 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 no. This particular ingredient, you can't use 5%. You have to use 4.5%. Because that 0.5 is very, very important. It can make or break your product. Really? You know, it can make or break your product. Formulations are extremely important when it comes to cosmetic manufacturing. Mm. Um, you don't just mix this and that and, mm. you know, come up with that. I think that's why I said with, with, for the, at the very first time when we did the University of YouTube, mm. it, was, it was just one of those informal things. But over time, you have to get your certification right for mm. your manufacturing because in the University of YouTube they won't tell you that mm. um, this particular ingredient is like this and that. Except so for this university. Ex ex except, except for, for Mohobe Nagazi. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, just so, joking, yeah. Um, over time you really have to get your papers and your mm. certifications and your processes right, really. Mm. Yes. And then in terms of uh, copyright or shall I say intellectual property considerations, how are you approaching that and and uh, how how uh, how complex is the infrastructure for manufacturers, especially manufacturer of cosmetics? You know, for, for the manufacturing of cosmetics, it's, it is a bit complex. Because um, you, you, when you get online right now, you just search um, body butter formulation, mm. you will get a formulation, you know? Um, you'll get different formulations, over a hundred of them. So uh, in, in terms of a general statement, mm. um, getting your IPs right, it's, it's, it's a bit difficult. Mm. Now when it comes to us, we literally made a formulation that is special to us mm. or specific to us mm. in terms of how much, because at the end of the day, the formulation also affects the quality mm. in terms of how much of this particular butter can you use for this. Um, you might find out that in our formulation, we are using maybe about 10 butters or 10 oils to use in our um, mm. lotion mm. but in another formulation that you get online they're using two or three or even one mm. and water and an emulsifier so um, getting that information right especially now that we've included or our main selling point is the indigenous part with the oil and the barbab and the muvula that percentage that they, it, it's very very important mm. so with all our formulations we do have the IP certified mm. luckily mm. Um, you know this, this week we were in talks with our lawyer and we needed to get all those nitty gritties correct because mm. now when we're even looking at partnerships with other people mm -hmm. who want to maybe in terms of, of growing yes in terms scaling of growing up. and scaling up is that we what you're to, working on yes that's what we're working on mm. um, we need to, to protect our IP you know we need to say look as much as you're now joining the company you need to understand that this is our formulation mm. it's not something that you can just take on and just move on and start producing for yourself should anything happen yes. so um that's you that's need one those thing. Yes, you, you need, need a those very good lawyer and apart from the formulations themselves the product itself um it's it's very very easy to steal um ip in terms of um the product itself you know we were attending a conference um a year ago um where we didn't even know the stuff and they say, you know, it's very easy to have a product like this and have someone take it and just scratch out the Shadol name mm. and put their name on top of it. Mm. And you know what? Because people are used to Shadol, they see, okay, this is how a Shadol bottle looks like. They'll just take it thinking it's Shadol, mm. but in actual fact, it's another name over there. Mm. So you need to get all those things in check from your name itself mm. to the design of your containers to all, you need to get all of those certified and protected so you need a, a like you might need in one product you might have three or four even more pieces even of more. it exactly the formulation the name exactly so there's also the trademark yeah, exactly there's also uh, the what the copyright aspect the co uh -huh. and then you know i'm not a copyright lawyer so i won't go <laughs> any further <laughs> definitely all right so um, let's talk about retail, um, getting into the retail space. There are those who argue that the world has changed enough. We don't need retail space anymore. You can sell, sell directly to the consumer. What do you say about that? I say it depends on your market. Mm -hmm. I say it depends on the current market that we're in. Um, in Botswana, as much as the world is now shifting into the fourth industrial revolution, where everything is IT, everything is technology. Um, I think we're still lacking 
for lack of better words, in, mm. in terms of that department. Mm. You know, we have um, both the online pl platform and we're also in retail stores. Mm. And just looking at our statistics, we are doing better in the retail stores mm. than we are in the online platform. Mm -hmm. With the online platform, actually, it's, it's very funny. Most of the people who want the products through our online platforms are not even from Botswana. Mm -hmm. Most of them are outside. Most oh. of them are like, look, I'm in Cape Town and I want your products. How do I get them? Mm -hmm. And then that's what, and I think the, the whole culture or the whole environment in Botswana, it's, it's still more focused on the traditional methods. Even those local ones who um, contact us online, they're like, listen, I'm in Pikwe and I want the products. Which store can I go into? Yeah, yeah. Instead of saying, how can I get the products delivered to my house? It's which store can I? You have to educate the market, exactly. isn't it? We, we do educate them. We do yeah. educate them. And some do agree. Some are like, oh, great. I didn't even know you could do that. Mm. Please send them through Korea da, 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 to my door. Some mm. are like, listen, I want to go and go to the store, walk to the store myself, mm. yeah. get the product on the shelf, mm. because uh, that's just the culture that they're used to, I guess. But then what are the challenges associated with going through these, uh, you know, the retail, the retail shops, shops, the choppies of this world, the sefalanas of this world, to make sure that your product is there? Um, I won't even lie, it's a war and a half. Mm. It's a war and a half to penetrate into the, the retail stores. Mm. Um, a I war think, and a half, really? Yes, it's a war. I'm trying to imagine I, I, a war I, I, and a half. It's a war and a half, mm. um, exactly how I describe it. Mm. We've been trying to penetrate the retail market for about three years now, mm -hmm. and it's only in early 2020 last year where we managed to you know get our first taste of the retail space mm -hmm. and um you know with, with with retail i think the first thing that your buyer will say to you is one where are you which store are you already in right now mm. two your quantities are your quantities actually selling how much have you sold through retail stores? Because you're coming to me as another retail store, so I need to know if you're doing well in the other stores first mm. before you come into mine. Number three, am I sure that these products are going to move in the shelves? As you know, as an SMME or as a startup local manufacturer, that those are questions that really make you so anxious because you're yeah. like, this is the first time I'm getting mm. into a retail space, yeah, so yeah. I don't have such statistics. Yeah. But I do have my online statistics. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not good enough for them. Enough. You know? So I think one thing that manufacturers or just yeah, general brand owners need to realize that when they get into retail stores, you're going to fight. Mm. You can fight for a year, even more, um, where you need to prove that your product can what actually What about the positioning move. of the product once you are in? Having it in a prominent position. Having it in a prominent position. How do you handle that one? It's another war and a half. Mm. You know, we have distributors, like several distributors um, around the country. Mm. Um, we have CSL, Scamoso Group, this and that, mm. where they're representing certain brands, mm. you know. And when you get there, you pack your products on the shelf. Mm. They can literally move your products, yeah. remove it from their top shelf, put it on the bottom, yeah. and pack their products over there. Yeah. So you have to be going to your retail store almost every other day as frequent as possible because one mistake, your product is somewhere in some funny box behind yeah. the shop somewhere. Nobody's going to see. And it. nobody's going to see. So you really need to be very active. You need to and, be vigilant. And, yeah, you need to be very vigilant. You need to be able to fight. Mm. You don't need any weaklings in the retail store because it's, it's a shock and it can swallow you whole if you're not careful. Have you thought of opening your own retail Retail store. We have, we have. Um, they are Botswana who have even approached us saying, "Listen, mm. um, five years down the line, we we want to be having um, a small chain or startup retail store mm. over there." And it's really promising. I mean, Botswana are really, really interested in, in getting or tapping into that market, and even having our own, mm. where we say, "Listen, we're gonna have our own store." Um, our own Shadol store where people can mm. walk in and get everything Shadol um, mm. in, in the products. We have thought of that. We do on have that. that. Um, we do have our, both our perfume bars in Airport Junction and in Game City have all our products. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess with the retail aspect, we just wanted more reach in mm. terms of both in the, in the, in the city and where about outside. In, uh, where about in Game City? I'm trying to imagine. I haven't seen any Shadol stop show there. You haven't. In games, it's where, right about, where are you located? We are right in front of ShopRite. It's, it's um, in the center. Yeah. In the center of all those. The ShopRite, Pep, JB Sports. Our stall is okay. right there. It's a perfume bar. I'm sure even the viewer is yes. benefiting. What about in... Uh, and then in Airport Junction, we're in the middle, the walkthrough middle there, um, in the, between um, Fushini mm. and your um, JB Sports. Is, aren't yes. those rentals prohibitive? 
Yes, uh, uh, they are. Yes and no. They are, <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. I, I'll say yes and no, really, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in that, in that um, aspect. And yeah. Yeah, getting into, into those malls alone is very difficult. Mm. Um, we just opened our APJ perfume bar and we've been fighting to get there for a year. We were so happy when they finally allowed us to say, you can have your own spot over here. So mm. it's, it's absolutely amazing. Mm. It was a war and a half, but mm. we managed to, to pull through. Yeah. I think I read somewhere uh, in, um, in the story of Fubu, for us by us, you know, Damon Young, uh -huh. John, the, his approach to getting noticed was to help celebrities promote or wear his clothes. To what extent are you using celebrities to promote this product? We, we are, in terms of celebrities, I think the new term for the new cool currents these days is influencers. Influencers, influencers yes. um, whereby, you know, you have someone who has a lot of reach online, mm -hmm. um, on your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitter, and they talk about your product to see, oh, I'm using this and that Who's and that. that. And currently we have Mangaka. Mm -hmm. She is very famous on Instagram. Mm. Um, she has over 100,000 followers on mm -hmm. Instagram. Our very own. She's a Gabs of presenter as well. So she's the one who's mostly actively um, promoting our products on the mm. social medias. And the, I think the lovely thing about her is that her market is both here and international. Um, we get I people think you should consider partnering with Moro Nuggets of Wisdom We also. should actually. So we that, like that. these products. <laughs> We're big fans. <laughs> All right, let's talk about reviews. Um, how do you know what's been said on the ground and what sort of reviews have you been receiving about these products? Um, you know, one thing that I like about the reviews is that it's the most important, one of the most important things um, that any company, any brand um, should, should really get to know about. Um, and and our, generally in our social media pages, we have a review, review tab where people just talk about or, you know, give their opinions on the products. And it's amazing how much that can do for the company. Those who've been with us from the very beginning when we just had our perfumes to date, they know that this was not how our butter started. We mm. had to go back to the drain bird because our first butter was a disaster. <laughs> it was it was a mess. It was, you know, it was it just left dry skin. And you know, people were just like, Okay guys, we love you, but you need to go back to the drain board in yeah. terms of this. And we did go back to the drain board. Mm. And now people love the product, you know. Mm. People like I said, if you're an active follower of all I'm on our on our Instagram, mm. um, our latest post is actually one of the, the clients say, you know what? The Baobab range, I absolutely love that butter. I've mm. been looking for something that moisturizes my skin like this. Mm. You guys have earned yourself a new loyal customer. Mm. So um that, that's one thing that any other manufacturer company or brand should really maintain in terms of the reviews um, at our stalls as well you have um, your box your opinion box mm. where people come and say okay I think this and this and this about the products mm -hmm. about the people who are servicing those products and the people who are selling those products mm. and this and I love that this person who sold me this she was very polite she was very kind mm. because I think that's just generally other, the other thing that we, we love in our company mm. um, the type of people yeah mm. the type of people who recruit into our company mm. should match the energy of the of, of the executive Mm. You know, um, the way you sell the product, the way you interact with the clients, mm -hmm. um, it, it's a crucially, crucially, very yeah. crucial. I happen to know when you talk about the energy of the executives that you're family and you're running the business as a family business. Are there any special uh, challenges associated with that, especially when things are not going right? In terms of the family? Mm. Um, I, I think one thing, we always get this question. Mm. One thing that we, we, we maintain at Channel is that, you know, wh when it comes to business opinions, it's just, it's strictly business opinions. Mm. You know, the whole family thing is still not door once we walk into the offices. Mm. Um, that's, that's, that's one thing that, that we really like because at the end of the day, I guess, yes, uh, yeah, my sister. Yes, your yes. sister, but your, With, your, your nephews are also exactly, involved. Exactly. Everybody's you know, involved. Everybody is involved. Yeah, but like you and I your said, sister, yes, yes. Yeah, mainly. Mainly. Once you, once you walk into those offices, there's no such thing as my sister. I said, nope, it's mm. through at the door. Mm. Where we now look at the bigger picture. I think mm. the, the other good thing is that we both have the bigger vision of Shadol. Mm. And I think once you have that in line, once you both have the same vision, once you have the, the, the hunger for growth, mm -hmm. then everything is smooth sailing from there. Okay. One thing you wanted to, to mention when we're prepping for this show is the importance of um, business systems. And you wanted to talk to other SMMEs about the importance of systems. Um, could you please elaborate on that and, and explain what you had in mind? Business systems, business systems. I think. Uh, 
I, I read this article one time um, on Forbes that mm. was just having a general review of SMEs, and they were talking about how the, one of the main reasons that SMEs fail is because they don't have proper business systems um, in place. Mm -hmm. And business systems, uh, it goes from the processes of the company. When we're now looking to manufacturing the processes, do you document the processes of your manufacturing mm -hmm. in there? When it comes to the financial side, I'm a finance graduate, by the way. Um, mm. When it comes to the finance side, which is you're mostly the part... You did a master's, am yeah, I, right? I did my undergrad. I'm okay. now I'm okay. trying to pursue my MBA. MBA, okay, yes. all right. And then when we now into... Your undergrad was on? Um, banking and finance. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So now, when we when we get into the finance aspect, accounting aspect, it's mm. very, very, very important to keep your books in check. Mm. And I think that's one thing that was a huge slap in the face for us in Chital because when mm. we started, we were just doing things in the dark. Mm. It was just, you know what, we're having transactions, this and that. Mm. And, you know, the MD one day was like, she just woke up and she's like, are we really making money in Chital? Yeah. Why is it that every time money comes in, it always goes out. Every time I check into the, and I'm like, we are. It's just that, mm. one, mm. the booking systems are not in place. Two, we're still at the very high level growth stages, mm -hmm. whereby every Tebe that comes into the company, it has to be reinvested one way or another mm -hmm. into the machines, into the raw materials, into mm -hmm. all of these things. So, you know, when you're not really invested into those accounts, that's when someone gets the question, for, are we really making mm -hmm. that money in mm -hmm. there? But like I said, business systems are very important to keep track of every single thing mm -hmm. that goes on in the company, from your manufacturing process, which even affects your certifications when you're going for the FDA and your EUs, where they say this is from step A to step B, how long does it take to make this butter? The process um, in terms of turnaround time, um, in terms of your accounts, what so comes in? So in. in your setup, is everything computerized? Everything is, um, I wouldn't say computerized, I'd say semi. Mm -hmm. It's semi-computerized. Mm -hmm. um, all our selling points um, and our accounting points are computerized, mm -hmm. luckily because that's one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of the processes um, inside the factory, um, I'd say it's, it's semi, mm -hmm. half semi-manual. Okay. Yes. Let's talk about marketing in terms of um, your approach to marketing. Um, you touched on the social media side. What, 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 what insights can you share on marketing? Marketing, I, I think with marketing, especially for our space, it's, it's, we, we, we found out that it's more of a holistic approach. Mm. Um, yes, the world is mostly turning into digital marketing, which is amazing, by the way, which is what we're doing. Mm. But we also um, shouldn't forget the traditional methods of marketing that even led to the digitization. Mm. Um, our traditional method, I'm talking about billboards. Mm -hmm. um, those who know our name, that we know that we have a billboard along the Nelson Mandela Road. Mm -hmm. um, apart from that, we're also talking about newspapers, articles, radio interviews, the Mohobi Nuggets interviews. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's part of the, the marketing, traditional marketing methods. Yeah. And you know, I, I think Traditional mixed yes, with modern. Traditional yeah. mixed with modern with technology. Mm. Um, once we have that in place, once you have a more holistic view, you're sure that you're targeting every market mm -hmm. from those who are the young ones who are mostly on the digital space to our elders who are mostly reading newspapers and listening to radio and all of that. Mm. And other forms like standing in the street and selling it to the people. Mm. Um, do you um, do that? We do that. We, mm. we do that. Mm. You will do not be surprised when you walk into trans or you walk into a retail store and you see the MD actively selling mm. like she's a promoter mm. um, selling the product to the people you know every 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 single one of those marketing they, they are very much accepted they do produce results mm. um, whether it's on digital platform or traditional that's one thing that for our company specifically that really works for us you talk also about international market is the market ready internationally let's start regionally SADC and then let's talk about Africa and then let's talk the world and then this of the world. Mm. Um, like I said at the beginning of this interview, this is one vision that we really see should all going to. We want every person locally to have one product, one way. You see how we have a lot of products. So you mm. should have one. At least. One way or another mm. in, 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 your, in your household. Well, right now I have all that. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you move into um, originally the Sadak region. Mm. Um, I think, uh, let, me, let me just generalize it in terms of Sadak and international. Apart from the documentation, in terms of penetration and access, one thing that we really, really wanted um, to achieve first was to penetrate the local market immensely. Mm -hmm. If our local people are able to know this product, 
it's then easy for us to spread out. Mm -hmm. I'll give an example with um, other big brands that we may be familiar with, with our Nivea's and our the body shops. They started in that local space. Now, once they've penetrated the local space and have accumulated much, and it's now self-sustainable, it's very easy for you to go into another country because when we now export our, our, our outside the borders of Botswana, it's a whole new business model on its own mm. because the market here and the market in South Africa are totally different. You know, In what sense? In, in terms of the buying power, for example. Mm. I, I, I had mentioned that um, at the beginning, um, it, was, it was very difficult for our body butter that's costing me 80 pula to move at the shelves. Mm. In South Africa, that population is also a very important aspect, by the way. Mm. The 1% of the population in Botswana and the 1% in South Africa totally different. Mm. So that 80 pula butter can sustain itself in a market like South Africa. Mm. But unfortunately in Botswana, we're limited to the number of people. Mm. So uh, uh, the market research of where we're exporting into, um, the laws and the regulations are also very important because, you know, um, I think when we now turn into the um, natural and organic, mm. you know, in other countries, you can't just claim to be organic if you mm. don't have the certification that you're organic. You yeah. can't just claim to be natural if you don't have the certification backing you up. Mm. They won't even allow you in that country. Mm. Mm. So those are the things that we really need to look into, your certifications, um, the way your branding is done, you mm -hmm. see, um, the way your, your barcode is put, the way your ingredients or your NC names, in our language, mm. you call them NC names, the way they're aligned, in you know, NC names, mm -hmm. INC. I, I C N I, yeah. where you say, okay, the, and this um, tiny yes, little bit, this tiny little bit over here, mm. the way it's written, Sometimes it's ordered. Sometimes you need a magnifying glass for, <laughs> for that. You need mm. really sharp eyes. Mm. You know the way they're written down. Mm. Um, it, it's regulated differently in different countries. So um, that's why you, you'd find out that. Um, one product that is being sold here and one product mm. that is being sold in Germany mm. is totally different. Yeah. The marketing is different. Mm. So all those, like I said, it's, it's a whole new model on its own that a company really, really needs to do a lot of research on. Mm. But one thing I, I am happy about is that originally we are more than ready. Mm -hmm. We're more than ready to start um, exporting into your, your static. Mm. Um, we've already done that process. We already have people who are using um, these products originally. So that's amazing. And now the big next step is to find uh, a sustainable retail market mm. or our own mm. in, in one of um, the, the countries nearby. Okay, then internationally? Internationally, we are still in the process. Mm. We are still in but online, people can uh, buy online, from anywhere. Online, people can buy from anywhere. That's the amazing part about the online platform. Mm. But in terms of um, retail space, we are now um, with the US who are trying to really use the Agoa, yeah. Agoa market and the FDA. And um, uh, with Agoa, we're left at five years. And the, and the US is saying, guys, we're left at five years. We want your products from Africa. Mm. What are you doing about it? Mm. So that's where you need to get all your FDAs in check, mm. which luckily we're still so in the middle of the process. To to start exporting to the US, how soon? How soon? I'd say as soon as the next eight to nine months. Mm -hmm. Eight to nine months once That's we good. have all of that in check. That leads us to my next question, which says if you have your crystal ball and you're looking forward, um, you know, looking five, ten years down the line, what are your projections? What do you visualize for Shadow? What do you visualize for Shadow? We visualize a lot. Mm. Number one, we'll have successfully managed to penetrate the local market fully mm -hmm. because right now we're just at the starting point fully in the next 10, ten years mm. and then moving forward we are in the regional market mm -hmm. properly where someone in um, Zambia say doesn't need to call us all the way in Botswana to say I want your product mm -hmm. they can just walk into the nearest local store and get our product I think that's that's the one of the main main ones mm -hmm. and having successfully exported our products um, into um, the US market and the EU market because um, one thing that we, we like saying um, in our interviews or in our general writing is that we like to say um, reducing our import bill one jar at a time. That's, that's <laughs> Say what, that again? That's it, reducing our import bill mm. one jar at a time. I like it. So I that's, like that. that's the aim and one of the values that we have for Shadol. Mm. Um, that's, that's one thing that we're really working around the clock into achieving. Mm. And I see that happening very, very soon. Okay. Yes. And in terms of um, uh, breaking down your business models, do you want to have one last word about that in terms of what do you want to share with the, the audience? Um, I think one thing about, about manufacturing, about any business in general, mm. be your own competition. 
break down your business models every it can be quarterly it can be half a year depending on what you want as a business mm. break them down crush them mm. and build it back up again i think this is one of the things that we learned when we went um for a uh, 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 was sort of a TED talk mm. um, um, in South Africa about two years ago yeah. um, where we were listening to one of the prominent business people that we were like, you know what, in this business, competition is really important, of course, externally, but even internally. Before your competitor can be able to break you down, break yourself down first. You Explain know? that for somebody, crush it and build it up. Crush I'll it and build it up again. Mm, mm. You know, um, I'll give a typical example from when we started um, in Shadol. We started when we were in Game City, mm-hmm. our perfume bar. Um, okay, let me not use that one. Let me use um, a general statement. Mm. There's, there's, what, what I like to say is that, you know, we, we, in Botswana, you can have 10 ladies selling fat cakes in mm. one line. Mm. They're all amazing. They all taste good. Mm. I can come as the 11th person and say, I also want to sell fat cakes here. But the most important question is, what am I doing that's different from all these other 10 ladies Mm. who are selling fat cakes? What is it that I do that I have a long line, I have 20 people getting fat cakes from me, Mm. when there are other people who are selling fat cakes outside? Oh, it's simple. Mm -hmm. I, I provide great customer service. I have a cream, I have a variety of fit cakes, one with a cream inside, one with um, hazelnuts or this and that inside, one with this and that. Mm. So you always have to, and then months down the line, every lady there is now having cream and having great customer service. Mm. Now you need to look at the next step because mm. you're not equal. Mm. You need to look at the next step. Okay, this is not working. What Another can I do? Another differentiator. Mm. So that's what I mean when I say crush your business models down and build it up again. Mm-hmm. Be your own competition. Look back and say, this has been working for us, but unfortunately it's not working anymore because the market is now catching up. Our competitors are, competitors mm. are now catching up. Mm. Use a different angle to retain and even gain new customers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So all those business models are very important. That's why you get different big companies. I'm sure if you watch your Forbes or or, or, or your other Bloomberg's and stuff, you can get a track of companies that started mm-hmm. in, in this century from 2000 to date. Some have died along the way because they were not moving with the times. They're not, they're not know, adaptive. They're not adaptive. So you mm. have to be a very adaptive um, company where mm. you can be able to sustain yourself in any given environment. Mm. Um, so that, that's one thing that I'd really advise. Have you been affected by COVID? We have. How so? We have, unfortunately. Um, positive or negative? Positive and negative, actually, mm. both. Mm. Um, in a negative aspect, it was more of you know we had we had a perfume bar we have a perfume bar and you know people would walk in i think because we're too comfortable with that covered said uh oh mm. here we are now what's mm. going to happen and you know the lockdown happened um our store wasn't being opened anymore because mm. it wasn't considered essential mm. and even if it was open people would walk in and say but it's a fragrance i need rice for my children at home mm. i don't need a fragrance mm. i'll be working at home you mm. know mm. where am I, who's going to smell me how when <laughs> have that. so they considered it a luxury product mm. I think that was the time where we even pushed harder mm. to move into re- the, to the retail space mm. because, you know, with, when it comes to our body butter and our body oil, mm. everybody baths every day, everybody applies lotion every day. That's one thing that you can't say, I, I don't need to go to the office in order to apply lotion. It's a necessity. Mm. So we had to say, you know what, um, now that the world is moving forward, um, mm. businesses are now having a more recession-proof um, um, type of um, okay. business model. All right. Yeah. This is part of the show where you get to ask me any question you wish. Great. Um, Shoot. My question is, mm. where do you think or how, what, what, what is your opinion on the manufacturing space in Botswana? Where do you think it is? Where do you think it's going? I think uh, it's looking very good uh, mm-hmm. because um, I had an interview, one of the nuggets I spoke to, Mr. Naik of... Uh, Flotech, mm-hmm. and he's been in the space now for a couple of decades now and he's doing very well. Speaking to him as a manufacturer and then talking to you, I get a, a sense of optimism. Um, COVID has induced, if you like, a shock, a short, sharp shock mm-hmm. to the system mm-hmm. where it has uh, told people that, look, stand up, do something. So I see that there's a deliberate shift and I see that uh, people are now f- considering manufacturing seriously and uh, also there's a, a, a serious consideration on food production and also what you're doing. What, what, 
so the view I take is that there's, there's a very positive outlook, that uh, there's a lot of promise in it. We've been, um, in Africa, I'm told that we've been trading 16% among mm. African countries. Mm -hmm. Now, with the coming into being of the Africa Free Trade Area or the Africa uh, Continental Free Agreement, mm -hmm. Free Trade Agreement, I have to get that right. With that happening, the borders, you know, coming down, the prospects for manufacturing are looking very good. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm excited to see young people like you and your sister really grabbing the bull by the horns mm -hmm. and taking it on. And, and I say, go for it. And the future looks very bright Great, for manufacturing. Amazing. Reducing yeah. our import bill one jar at a time. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> now, right. you have to look at that. I'd like you to look at that camera. All there. right. I want you to leave that viewer with an inspirational message, something uplifting, something powerful. All right. Um, dear entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, manufacturers, one thing that you should really focus on or really just not lose sight of is the fact that our manufacturing space is changing, like Mr. Mohobe said. Keep that fighting spirit on. There's still a long way that we need to go. Um, once you understand that as a manufacturer and as an entrepreneur, um, you're going to fight. And sometimes there's going to be times you lose tons of money. Sometimes you're going to cry and break down and say, you know what, I feel like giving up. This is not working. Be sure to understand the reason why you started. The why is the most important thing. When we started Shadol, we had a dream. We stuck to that dream. Even when times are hard, we look back and say, you know what, don't forget the thing that initially started this business, the thing that is moving us forward. Use that as a driver and you'll get there, definitely. Thank you very much. You very How much. does the viewer get hold of you? They All want right. your products, what do they have to do? All right, contact please details. Um, contact us on in our cell number. Our company cell number is 75216218. You can also find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram and on Twitter. And our offices are in the, by the Nkrumah Road, G West Industrial, um, by the Leah Incubators office number three. Thank you very much. Thank You've been you. a wonderful guest. You've done a Thank great you. job. Thank you. <laughs>